The levels adjustment is a great way to strengthen the lights and darks in your photos. But how does it actually work? Today we'll explore this tool and I'll show you the simple adjustment that will work in 99% of situations. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're talking about the levels adjustment in Affinity Photo. This also works exactly the same way in Affinity Designer and Publisher, so everything I show you here will also work in those programs. Now let's start with this quick demo here, and I like to start with black and white just because it's a little bit simpler and doesn't confuse us with color data. So in Affinity Photo, levels are accessed via an adjustment layer, and that's this button down here. So I'll click on it, and you can see the top one is levels, so probably it's pretty important. I'll select this here. Now for this video, I'm going to assume you're familiar with the concept of adjustment layers, but if not, I'll put a link here to my beginner video about adjustment layers. So I have the levels adjustment here, and as you can see, there's lots of sliders, and also this histogram up top. So let me just move some of the sliders and show you what happens. The most important two are these two up top, black level and white level. If I drag the black level, if you look at my image, you can see it getting darker. And if I drag the white level, you can see my image getting brighter. Now we have some other ones here, gamma. I can also drag this down. And then we have output black level. So I'll drag this up. You can see this seems to be making my image a little bit grayer. And then output white level, which is also making it grayer, but kind of in a darker way. So by the end of this video, you know exactly what these level sliders are doing. Now I just turned a bunch of dials, but let me explain a little bit about what this diagram up here is. This is a histogram, which means it counts something. And what's actually counting are the values in our image. And by values, I mean levels of black and white and gray in between. So going from left to right, we have a count of our pixels from the most black pixels all the way over to the brightest pixels here. Then the height of the graph is a count of how much that value appears. So looking at this graph, I can kind of guess what certain things represent. For example, we see the darkest part represented here with this big spike. And that's the leg here, this darkest part of our image. Towards the top, we can see kind of two different peaks, this really high one and this other one here. Now, if I squint at my image, I can see that the sweatshirt is the brightest part. So that would correspond to this bump here. Now, the wall behind her is this biggest spike here. And we can see there's a lot of area there, but it's not quite as bright as the shirt. So that tells me the relationship between these two shapes here. So that's an overview of what this histogram is telling us, and we'll work more with the histogram later. So to understand what the levels are actually doing, let's look at a slightly simpler image. I have this diagram here, and it's about six different shades of gray, going from pure black to pure white. Let me bring up the levels adjustment for that. So I've brought up the levels here, and you can see there's also a histogram. It looks a lot different than our other histogram because the colors are very separated. There aren't wide ranges of gray, there's just these six different levels. And you can see that in these six different spikes here. There's one in the very black area, which is a little hard to see. There's four in the middle, and then there's one that's pure white. Now let's watch what happens when I drag the black level to the left. Specifically watch what happens when it passes this spike here. You can see this turn completely black. Now this spike that's coming up, that's this gray level here. Let's see what happens when I drag past that. It's turning darker, and now it's pure black. And if I keep going one by one as I pass my levels here, each one turns pure black. Until finally, if I make it all the way to the top, that one goes pure black also. So let me go back. I can go the other way with the white level, so let me drag that down. And you'll see that one by one as I pass my spikes here, it turns pure white. So what the level is doing is essentially setting a threshold. It's saying, what is the cutoff point in your image where you want everything that's darker than that to be pure black? So if I drag through again, you can see I'm making a cutoff of things that are pure black. And it works the other way too with the pure white. So if I drag down to the middle here, I'm saying make everything that's above that level pure white. So it's almost like a threshold adjustment. Now I do want to give a caveat here. It's not a strict threshold. Let me show you what I mean. If I move the black level, you may have noticed all the levels are actually getting darker in my whole image. So I'll bring it up. If you look at this middle one here, watch how it's starting to get darker as I approach it until finally it gets pure black. So I did call it a threshold, but it's not an abrupt threshold. And actually this is kind of a good thing because when you're doing this in your images, you don't want there to be a really sharp difference between pure black and the rest of your image. You want it to be a little bit gradual. Let's look at a similar example, but with this time with a gradient. So I have my levels adjustment here. Let me open it up. And now you can see what the histogram for this looks like. Because there's an even level of black to white going across the image, you're basically getting a flat line up top. It's a little jagged just because of resolution and that kind of thing, but you can assume this is a straight line here. So watch what happens left to right as I drag the black level. You can see all the blacks in my image are starting to take over. 
And I can make the whole image black if I go all the way to the end. Same thing happens with the white level. Now I can do both at the same time. I can bring my black level up. And I can bring my white level over. And they can kind of meet in the middle there. So you can see I've really limited the range of my values here. Okay, let's go back to our black and white photograph here. Now I can tell just by looking at the image and looking at the histogram that her pants here aren't truly black. I can tell that because we have a lot of room here in the histogram that says there's no black. And by the way, these white lines at the edge, these are our sliders. So don't confuse that with part of the histogram. But back to her pants, let's prove that they're not black. I'll take the color picker. And if I hover over it, you can see what the values are. 14s, 10s, some are kind of low, 7. But we're not getting a true black anywhere. Now what I could do is I could actually make her pants truly black. And for that, I'll take the black level and I'll drag it past this spike over here. So now this is our level that's set. And you can see we've passed all the dark area of the pants. And this is just like what I did in that previous demo with the swatches of gray. So now if I take my color picker, everywhere I go is truly black because I've moved the black level past that point. And I can also do the same thing with her shirt. So let me bring the white level in and I'll pass all of that peak there. And now if I hover over her shirt, you're gonna see a lot of white. 255s all across is white. And there's still some gray levels. But if I moved it even more, we could get rid of that. Now, I'm not saying this is a good adjustment, but it actually has a certain effect here. But it gives you an idea of what's happening. You do want to keep in mind that as you adjust these white levels and black levels, you're losing information on the end ranges of your image. So let's look at her shirt again. If I bring the white level back to default, you can see all these subtle changes in here, all these little shadows and folds. But if I drag the white level past it, suddenly it gets all blown out and we lose it. Now, once again, this could be a stylistic effect. It's really up to you, but it's just something to be aware of as you're making these adjustments. So conceptually, we've seen what these sliders do, but how should we actually use them to make our image look better? Well, I have a landscape image here, and let me open up the levels adjustment. Now, this image actually is slightly in color. It kind of looks black and white, but there is a little bit of a color to it. And that's why the histogram is a little bit staggered here. You can see some separated red, green, and blues. Now, in general, when you're making an image, you want to have the full range of blacks and whites. You want to kind of capture that whole spectrum to bring the most interest to your image. And with an image like this, what we can see is that we're not actually taking advantage of the full range of values. So we're not really using a lot of these bottom blacks, and we're not using a lot of these top whites. You can see white in the image, but actually it's kind of gray. Let's hover over it. You can see 224. The snow is like 217. White would be 255. And we can look at the trees. There's no pure black there, really. So what we can do is we can drag our white level right up to the edge of our curve here. And that's going to whiten up our sky a lot. Similarly with the black level, we can get rid of all this empty space and move it up a little bit. And I'll put it here. And now we have a much darker bottom area here. So I'll do before and after. So this is before, after, before, after. And because it's an adjustment layer, we can always adjust the opacity to reduce the effect. So if this is too strong, I could dial it down a bit. So before after, before, after, but I'll put it back to 100% just to show what's happening clearly. And in general, this is kind of what you want to do most of the time. You want to get rid of these gaps at the top and the bottom of your image. So you want to bring in these levels so you're not missing any of that value range. Now, again, this is just a general rule of thumb. There's always stylistic reasons you would or would not want to do this, but it's the first thing you should try to see if your image is going to look better. Let's look at another image here, and this one is in color. Let me open up the levels adjustment. Now we still have these output levels at the bottom to talk about, the output black level and output white level. Now for this demo, let me open up a separate histogram here. There's actually a standalone histogram window in Affinity Photo. And you can see it's the same as the one below. It's just a little wider. The display is just a little stretched out more, but the information is the same. We have our two peaks in the upper range here. And we have this mountain shape down at the bottom. Now looking at this image in this histogram, you can see it's actually pretty much corrected already. Our blacks are pretty much up against the edge here, and same with our whites especially, which I assume is this coat here. Now what the output levels are going to let us do is almost do the opposite of what we just did. What if we wanted to add in some space at the end of our value ranges? In other words, what if we didn't want the darkest dark to be black? What if we wanted to raise it up a little and make it gray? So we can do that with the output black levels. So watch what happens when I pull this output level up. I'll put it up a lot and you can see our image got grayer here. And we can see as in my histogram up here, I added in a lot of empty space over here on the left. So all our blacks got pushed into this gray area. And by the way, this histogram here shows a real time update of what's happening to your image. The histogram in the levels interface shows the original distribution. So down here we have our original histogram. Up here is the modified one where I moved the output black levels up. 
So if I wanted, I could also make this coat gray so I could bring down the output white level. And you can see I pushed the whites here all the way into this gray range. So this is the definition of a low contrast image. Everything is being squished into the middle area. I can even go more extreme. And it's hard to see the image because it's all been forced into this gray area. So if you have an image and you want to reduce the contrast in it, you can adjust these output black levels and white levels. I see a lot of photos online these days where they add filters to reduce the contrast. It kind of gives it like a vintage look or like it was taken with an old film camera. So that's one way you could get that effect. Now a related concept to levels is curves and that's also an adjustment layer accessible here. I also have an introduction video to curves so I'll put a link here. Be sure to check that out if you want to learn how that works. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.